Hello. Welcome to From Beyond the Pain and Illinois Basketball Podcast. I'm Cody. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody underscore CHO and on TikTok. I'm coming to you live right here on YouTube, Twitter, and even my Facebook page. What I'd like you to do is come to the Facebook page or not the page, come to my YouTube channel. Uh, about 415 subscribers trying to get to 500 before the end of this college basketball season. And, um, Listen, Illinois season could be done in a week. It could be done in two weeks, three weeks I, it, it, at this point. Uh, so, you know, it's going to feels like it's going to take a miracle to get there. But we're going to keep trying, keep chugging along. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. If you are, uh, if you've consistently been here, thank you. I appreciate you. Please hit the like button. Um, and yeah, Illinois wins 77-74. In the Big Ten tournament uh, quarterfinal against Ohio State, trailed by as many as 10 points at one point, uh, made the comeback in the second half and to win, se- again, 77-74. Terrence Shannon, 28 points. Dane Danger, the Dane Danger game, uh, best game of the season by far for Dane Danger. Holy cow. Um, he's been playing well of late. Uh and uh, he played well in that last game against Iowa. Um, and now they're going to play either the winner or not either, but they're going to play the winner of Nebraska and Indiana, in which I have that game on right now. That's what I'm looking at. If you're live watching me on video, um, Nebraska is uh, whooping that ass, as one might say, to IU right now. Um, and I'm very glad I did not take Indiana plus five and a half. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. I'm I am I'm happy. Yes. Um looks like Illinois is probably going to play Nebraska tomorrow. I if you would have forced me to choose which team I'd like Illinois to play tomorrow, it would have been Indiana just because I think Indiana, you know, this last couple weeks stretch they had where they're playing well uh was uh, you know, fraudulent. I thought it was uh you know, I thought they were, you know, still not good. Um they just lost their top recruit for next year already. Um, with Jawan Howard getting fired today, <clears throat> Mike Woodson might become my new Jawan Howard. We'll see. Um, anyway, again, Nebraska up by like 20 points right now in the second half against Indiana. So it looks like it's going to be Illinois and Nebraska tomorrow uh, in that semifinal matchup to potentially play either Wisconsin or Purdue. And uh, I don't want to think about that yet. I don't want to think about that particular matchup yet. But this is... This win is huge in terms of, you know, going through some adversity here in postseason play and still figuring out a way to win. If they would have lost this game the way they played this game, um, I'm I'm pretty sure none of us would have felt good even in a week after, you know, the loss would have, you know, died off, I guess. Um, would have been a bad loss. Even though Ohio State's been playing well, uh, for a large point, a large portion of this game, Illinois did not play very well, uh, at least offensively. And then they still s- managed to almost put up 80 points again. Uh, third consecutive game, they didn't allow a team to get uh, 80 points, though. So, you know, the defense continues to shine. I do think the defense is a big reason they won today. Uh, Jamison Battle kind of owned us. He's a really good shooter. Uh, 21 points. Uh, Bruce Thornton also had a good game, 20 points. They were kind of the guys that were uh, killing Illinois on, on the defensive side. But, you know, they, they didn't get much from anyone else. Mahaffey, uh fouled out, played him 11 minutes. Um, Okapara had five fouls. He had 10 rebounds, but only 24 minutes. Uh Gail Jr., nine points. Um, and yeah, you know, they didn't get much from their starting lineup. Their bench played pretty well for them. Royal had a couple shots in the second half that helped them. Key was was pretty key for them, no pun intended. Uh Middleton hit some big shots for them, including a big three-pointer uh when they were kind of making a run. Um, and yeah, they did they it was the game of benches in this one, right? That's what it feels like. Uh, because Illinois bench. Uh, you know, they, they fit the bill as well with again, Dane danger, 17 points or 18 points today, four of eight from the free throw line. I'll take 50% from the free throw line, 
uh, for Dane Danger, all right? The, as a team, Illinois sucked today at the free throw line. Um, but Dane Danger, I'll take four of eight every single day. I'll take it every single day from him. Uh, but seven of ten from the field, eight rebounds. Um, he's just a presence down low today. He he made up for Coleman Hawkins having a terrible game, honestly, outside of the last five minutes. The best part of Coleman Hawkins' game today was the last five minutes, getting some big rebounds, had a huge block uh, that you know really really shifted the momentum towards uh, Illinois in those in those final minutes. Um, I thought it was kind of a team win overall. Uh, obviously, this this game was was won because of Dan Danger and Terrence Shannon Jr., who had 28 points and kind of you know carried Illinois offensively for most of this game. Uh, but you didn't get a ton from Damask. And like I said, Hawkins, he didn't do much of this game either. But 12 points from Ty Rogers, again, 18 from Danger. It's like it was them two. Ty Rogers being that X factor, I feel like he can be in March. And then you just had – I feel like the defense in this game was was great uh, for for Illinois, especially in the final 10 minutes. Yeah, they allowed Ohio State to score 45 in the second half, but they only scored 29 in the first half. So I feel like overall they they defended well. Ohio State only shot 45%. That's better than some games we've seen where they've allowed teams to shoot, uh, you know, 50-plus percent, 55, 60%. Uh, you know, mm. sorry, I had to get some water there. Um, yeah, I, I just felt like it was an overall good team win and it was a good team building win, uh, a confidence builder for March. Perhaps, perhaps I'm not saying it is, but perhaps it could be, could be. We'll see what we do, what they do tomorrow against likely Nebraska and we'll see how things move forward the rest of this weekend. But, you know, again, they probably should have lost this game. I, I mean, Brad Underwood said they got lucky today, right? So so they're going to go to the tape tonight. He is. And uh, we'll see how they come out and play tomorrow. Hopefully tonight was kind of a wake-up call for them. Like, hey, it is it is middle the middle of March. It's St. Patrick's Day weekend. Like, these games do matter. And what, as a fan, whether you want them to win or lose, um, you know, I, it's and because of rest, because of the NCAA tournament, you know, the spin zone to that is if they, you know, it, I think if they at least get to the NCAA or not the NCAA tournament, the championship game of this tournament, I think they have a good shot to at least get a three seed uh, based off some of the teams that have lost this week. I uh, think Kansas really falling back because of the injuries. Duke losing, honestly, a bad loss. They were like 10-point favorites against uh, NC State. Um, it's kind of opening the door for Illinois to perhaps get a three seed. So I'm on board here to, to try and win this tournament or at least win some games. If it comes down to Illinois and Purdue in this championship game, I'm going to probably throw up because if I have to watch Illinois lose three straight games to Purdue in one season, I'm going to... I'm going to want to cry a little bit, right? But, again, we'll get there when we get there. Um, turnovers, it was pretty even, 11 turnovers. Free throw shooting was something was something that really bothered me in this game for Illinois. If there's one thing to – if there's the main thing. I mean, they would have won this game easily if they made free throws. They were 20, 21 of 32 from the free throw line. I just – you you just can't do that in March, brother. You you really can't. You can't go twenty one of thirty two from a free throw line in March. And they again, this Ohio State team is not good. I know they've played well of late, and they were making a run. Okay, and I understand the Big Ten. No matter how good or bad it is, year in and year out, it's always competitive. And you know every roster is talented. All this shit. I I understand this, but at the same time. You're not going to win a game like this against Wisconsin or Purdue. Hell, even Nebraska, all right? To be honest with you, I'm pretty nervous about tomorrow's game against Nebraska because Illinois should have lost the game against Nebraska at State Farm Center earlier this year in February, all right? So 
I think the the pro going into tomorrow to face Nebraska is that their defense is playing better than when they last played Nebraska. So if they bring that defensive intensity, perhaps they can, you know, hold off Casey Tomanaga and Rink and whoever else I'm not thinking of right now, right? Um, I expect a bounce back game from Marcus Damask. I'm expecting a bounce back game from Coleman Hawkins. Uh, one of the, it, it, we, Terrence Shannon Jr. is one of the elite players in college basketball, right? So you feel good about what you're going to get out of him. But how Illinois has been able to win games in general is that they've had two of those three guys contribute at like at the level that we're used to seeing them. If they get two of those three and then you get a game like Ty Rogers gave you tonight. Again, 12 points was on the offensive boards. Uh, really good defensively. You could put them on almost any player. On top of whatever you can get out of Dane Danger, who's been playing well, right? And hopefully Quincy Garrier, who again, before this game, was playing well. You you can you can win. You can be you can hang with anyone in, in the country. You really can. But you need two of those three to show up. Terrence Shannon Jr. showed up tonight. Tomorrow, Marcus Damask needs to show up. All right. I don't necessarily ever ask Coleman Hawkins to put up a 20 point game because he does so much defensively and rebounding and all this stuff. But tonight, he literally didn't do anything until the last five minutes of the game. And I give him all the credit for that. Again, some huge rebounds, had the huge block to uh, really shift the momentum towards Illinois in, in, in those last few minutes. I gave him credit for that, but he really didn't have a good game. He had some bad turnovers. Had a he, he took a transition three that was not even close. Overall, just was not, honestly, a really good game from Illinois. And to me, they like Brad Underwood said post game with Andy Katz, they got lucky tonight. And so they got lucky. Now can you? play better tomorrow because it's not like you get a day off. You got to play tomorrow and Nebraska is no joke. Top 50 team in Kim Palm, I believe around in the thirties, like they've proven to be a very good team. So uh, I think it will help their resume if they beat Nebraska for sure. Uh, it will also help Nebraska's resume if they beat Illinois. So there's a lot to play for in this game for both teams. Obviously Nebraska never getting as far as this far in the tournament. Uh, is one thing for them, right? So we'll see. I I bitched and complained this week about uh, Brad Underwood not once again not getting a uh, Big Ten Coach of the Year, despite the fact that he has more wins than any other coach the last five years in the conference. It's time for him to continue to prove that against a guy like Fred Hoy Hoyberg, to Hoyberg tomorrow. So, um. Yeah, I mean, that's my general feelings right now. Um, they didn't play a great game, but they found a way to win. And sometimes good teams, perhaps great teams, find ways to win even when they don't play their best game, right? That's that's kind of how I feel. And I say this. I say this as someone who was lucky enough to witness the 2016 Chicago Cubs win the World Series. They won 103 games. They went on to the playoffs, and they had their ups and downs. And they found a way to win games no matter what. I think game seven is kind of like a really big testament to that. So, you know, that's baseball. Uh, this is college basketball. It's a lot different obviously, but I'm just trying to give some sort of comparison that good or great teams find ways to win no matter what. So you can be a little, you can question a little bit going into tomorrow. No doubt. You absolutely should. But also just remember good teams find a way to win. So also perhaps they won because I'm wearing my D Brown Jersey. All right. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. All right. Oh, man. All right, so I didn't do another show this week after their win against Iowa. Um, I wanted to go through all the awards that came out. 
All right. And so I think I read a lot of discourse on the internet related to the awards. Um, I don't get too crazy about this um, because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. However, I will continue to pound to fucking pound the table about the fact that Brad Underwood hasn't won Big Ten Coach of the Year. It's absolutely criminal. It's absolutely criminal that Brad Underwood hasn't won Big Ten Coach of the Year. More wins, more wins than anyone else in this conference. That includes Matt Painter. That includes Tom Izzo, all right? More wins the last five years than any Big Ten coach. And he doesn't have a Big Ten Coach of the Year. Jawan Howard has more Big Ten Coach of the Years than fucking Brad Underwood. And he just got fired today. Make it make sense. So this year, it was Matt Painter and it was co-Big Ten Coach of the Years. Matt Painter and Fred Hoiberg. And this is this is what the award is kind of turn in, turned into. It's like if your team surprises everyone and does better than what anyone thinks, then you're going to win the award, right? Uh, and that's basically what Fred Hoiberg did this year. And listen, I give him all the credit. I said in a video I put up on my TikTok account, like before these awards all came out, like the day after Illinois beat Iowa, that Fred Hoiberg, fine. He did an incredible job this year. Very deserving of it. And Matt, and I even said Matt Painter is deserving of it too, because after losing to Fairleigh Dickinson, a 16 seed last year, they came back and they were the best, one of the best teams in college basketball all season. Um, that all said, he had Zach Eady on his team, who I think is going to go down as one of the best college basketball players we'll ever see play. And, uh, you know, listen, I think the, he deserves Painter deserves a ton of credit, uh, for their success, but, I think if you look at their roster, you look at who they, the kind of players they have. I think you can you can pass on giving Matt or adding another trophy to Matt Painter's trophy case. He, it's not like he hasn't won one before. He has plenty of them. I just think that the fact that Brad Underwood hasn't got any recognition, not one season has he got any recognition for just building a really good program. Like, have we forgot where Illinois was before him? I mean, I used to dream of seasons like this. I remember the bat, like the gross years. I mean, shit, they were they were bubble teams every year when when John Gross was the coach. It was bubble teams. You were hoping that this and this happened, and maybe you'd get in, you'd get like an eight or a nine seed, and then you know whatever. And that and that never happened. It happened like one time during. I think it was Myers Leonard, Brandon Paul, DJ Richardson, those years, right? For for five years, this team has won 20 plus games every season. They were a one seed one season. It don't you, it doesn't matter what happened in, in March. I'm talking about Big Ten. I'm talking about the the Big Ten conference. They were they they <sighs> They were a one seed. They would have won the Big Ten Conference if it wasn't for some stupid technicality uh, because it was like the COVID season, right? Then the year after, they won the Big Ten. After Io DeSumo graduated. Uh, last year is the one season where I can say, okay, probably didn't deserve it then because there was a lot of tor- turmoil in the locker room with guys like Sky Clark, Jay Nepps, whatever. Last year, okay, fine. But this year, you go through all this all this stuff with Terrence Shannon Jr. You're implementing new players like Marcus Damask. You're implementing uh, – you're, you're trying to find roles for guys like Luke Goody and Justin Harmon and Quincy Gurrier. Like, like, sure, you have more players familiar this year, but you also added new players too. And, again, you took a guy from the Missouri Valley and Marcus Damask and made him a first-team all-Big Ten player. If they're going to go co Big Ten of the Year awards, like give it to two guys, I'm sorry. Matt Painter has enough. The fact that you haven't given one to Brad Underwood to me is just criminal. All right. So there is my rant on this. Okay. I'm done. You all know I'll stop bitching about it for now. 
at some point I will bitch about it again because it just pisses me off to no ends. Largely because I met Brad Underwood outside beautiful historic Wrigley Field last summer. Very, very drunk. But he's also given me a lot to be happy about in the fall and winters because no, no other team I like likes to do that. The Bears don't know how to do that. The Bulls don't know how to do that. All right. All I'm saying is that he's been consistent. Sure, it's not perfect. It's not like Illinois is a blue blood. He hasn't turned them into a blue blood program. They haven't won a national championship. Shit, they still haven't even got to a Sweet 16 in the Underwood era. But he has built a program that was literally dead in the water, you know, seven years ago, and turned it into one of the more premier programs in the Power Five. Year after year, 20 plus wins. Competing for Big Ten championships. All right. No Big Ten Coach of the Year awards, though. All right. Make it make sense. Let's go to the comments. Um, Shy Town Custom Cornhole Boards. ILL, brother. ILL. I and I. Um, Adam. This actually makes me feel better about the NCAA tournament. Damask, Hawkins struggle offensively. We got out a win against a desperate team who had been red hot. I'll take it. See, I, that's kind of how I feel. Like, again, if bad te- like good teams find a way to win games, right? Good teams find a way to win games. At, at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. They find a way to win no matter how ugly it is. But at some point, you're going to need guys like Hawkins and Damask to play better. And they, and I expect Damask, too, because he's been consistent all season. And I will say that he had a better second half than his first half, because in his first half, he had zero points and was 0 of 6. He scored seven points. He had a big three. Uh, he had, he had, he had He would have had double-digit points if he didn't just miss two wide-open layups, right? So... I'm with you, Adam. I'm with you. Alan, on Facebook, if Danger and Hawkins play like that all tournament, they will be hard to beat. If Hawkins plays like the last five minutes, perhaps. he didn't. To me, he just did not have a good game, man. But I hear what you're saying. Um, all right. Other awards. So, Zach Eady, Player of the Year. Selected by the Big Ten. This is by the Big Ten coaches. So the coaches picked Edie to win player of the year, which is fine. It's great. Like, it's not surprising. He is, It's big of me to say he's one of the best big men I've ever seen. And I think he – I'm curious to see if he has a chance to be an NBA player, but I don't expect him to be a first-round pick just because he can't shoot. Now, if it was like 15 years ago, he'd probably be a top-ten pick. But, yeah. Uh, Defensive player of the year, they went with Ace Baldwin from Penn State. He was a dog against Illinois in that in that game that still pains me. Um, Co-freshman of the year, McKenzie M- – M- I can't say his last name. Mbako uh, from Indiana. Owen Freeman for Iowa. Sixth man of the year was Mason Gillis, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not like, questioning any of this stuff. Um All right, your first team included Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon Jr. It had Boo Booey from Northwestern, Edie, and Braden Smith from Purdue. Uh, th- again, this is selected by coaches. I think it's, I think it was the right decision for sure to leave off Coleman Hawkins on this. If they would have put Coleman Hawkins on this, then they wouldn't have included Terrence Shannon or D- Marcus Damask, one of the two. Um, I think Marcus Damask and Terrence Shannon Jr. have been the most consistent. Um, I know Terrence Shannon Jr. missed a month, but, you know, I'm, there's no, there's no question. He's one of the best players in the country. All right. I'm not going to get into the whole off the court stuff. I don't want to discuss it. I've discussed it enough. Um, he was, he was deserving of this award. All right. Their second team had Tony Perkins from Iowa, Jameer Young from Maryland, Tyson Walker, Michigan State, Casey Tomanaga from Nebraska, and A.J. Store from Wisconsin. Um, third team, 
Kellel Ware from Indiana, Peyton Stand, San, Sanfort from Iowa, Dawson Garcia from Minnesota, Rink Mast from Nebraska, Brooks Barnheiser from Northwestern, and Ace Baldwin Jr. from Penn State. Like I said, Coleman Hawkins was an honorable mention. He was the only other Illinois player that was an honorable mention. Personally, if there's anything for me to complain about, it's the fact that Coleman Hawkins isn't on the second or third team. Um, I think he should have at least been on the third team. But you know, again, uh, this conference, despite the fact that the you know team wise, it's down this year compared to other conferences. There's still a lot of really good players, um, you know, and and they go you know they go multiple guard. They they went all guards on the second team, um, third team mostly guards as well. Um, I don't know. I, 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 again, I don't complain too much about this, but I do believe that Hawkins be belongs on the second or third team. He's on the second best team in the conference and he's not on here considering the things like the, the type of player he is, the things he's done for Illinois. Um, I don't care what like his reputation is, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I guess this is telling of how coaches feel about him. Because, uh, again, this is the coaches one. <sighs> I don't know, man. It is what it is. There's a long list of honorable mentions. And, you know, I could go I could go on this list and, and bring up other guys, too. You know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Jamison Battle had a great game against Illinois tonight. He probably belongs on one of these lists, too. He's one of the best shooters in, in this conference. Julian Reese and Malik Hall both owned Illinois in the games that they played. Um, there are honorable mentions. Um, you know, Lance Jones is a guy who has given me lots of pain. Fletcher Lawyer for Purdue as well. Um, yeah, so it, it is what it is. I But I still think Hawkins belongs on one of the second or third teams. It is what it is, though. Chi-Town Custom Cornhole Board says, Coleman talks too much crap and was penalized. Yeah, It fits our narrative, right? Fits our narrative. All right. Um, let's see. Quincy Garrier was given the Sportsmanship Award honoree, or he was nominated for that, for at least from Illinois. Um, now, the v, the media voting panel, uh, of course, went with Zach Eady. Freshman of the year went to Owen Freeman. Uh, Coach of the year, uh, Ho uh, Fred Hoiberg and Matt Painter, obviously. Like, I already went on my rant about it. Um, so their first team, though, did not include Marcus Damask. It included Jameer Young from Maryland instead. Um, Terrence Shannon, uh, Boo Boo, Isaac E. Braden Smith, and Jameer Young. I I think that uh, that's fine, too. Jameer Young also had some good games against Illinois. He's been one of the best players in this conference, so it's fine. Damask did make the second team, and Coleman Hawkins did make the third team from the media. So. Um, it's crazy the reputation of Coleman Hawkins, uh, if that has anything to do with it, uh, of why he didn't make the coaches one. You know, he still made the third team uh, for the media one. So, very interesting stuff. Um, other, I don't think Illinois had another honorable mention. They did not. So, that's basically all the awards. I just saw a lot of discourse related to it on the internet. Uh, today or not today this week uh, at the end of the day to me it doesn't really matter i think you can argue coleman hawkins uh should have been you know like uh on the all defensive team uh which i don't think they have it on this list i'm looking at it where is ah here we go they have it did they put it in here and they didn't have it in the media one Maybe it's I don't know how they do the the defensive team, but they're all defensive team. Uh, oh, I totally read the all defensive team. I totally skipped over it. <laughs> it included Kellel Ware from Indiana, Brooks Barnheiser from Northwestern, Ace Baldwin Jr., Penn State, Zach Eady, Cliff Amore from the Rutgers, and Chucky Hepburn from Wisconsin. Um, I think. If there's another thing I would argue for Coleman Hawkins, it would be for the all-defensive team. But 
it's hard to argue anything for Illinois in defense considering their defense wasn't very good all season. Is what it is, though, right? Um, but I think the the reason that he's being penalized for it is because of the way Illinois plays defense. They went small. They wanted teams to basically eat inside but not get any threes up, uh, essentially. Like a long story short, right? He had to guard some big dudes. Both games against Purdue, this guy's guarding Zach Eady one-on-one, bro. There's a reason Zach Eady ate. It's because, like, Coleman Hawkins can't guard Zach Eady. <laughs> um yeah, but I do feel like, you know, his block tonight kind of intensifies why I believe he belongs on this list. I mean, he was he he is one of the more versatile, you know, point forwards in in the conference, at least uh, the being able to bring the ball up in transition, uh, being able to do all kinds of things and guard almost anyone on the court. Right. I just feel like he's deserving on this list. I don't know who I would put him over. Um, but, you know, I know Amori is a great shot blocker. Hepburn, Baldwin, great. You know, he's they're great, uh, you know, on-ball defenders. You can even argue Terrence Shannon Jr. being on this list. I think Terrence Shannon Jr. is one of the best two-way guards in the country. Um, but, you know, him making the first team, for both media and coaches is, is good enough for me. Cause I didn't think he was going to make any list based off the off the court stuff. All right. So that's all I have on that. I wanted to touch on it. Uh, again, Illinois wins 74 or 77, 74. Nebraska is up 84 to 53. As I speak right now, they're going to play Illinois tomorrow at two 30 Purdue and Wisconsin tip off at, 12, so maybe not right at 2.30. Depends on how long that game goes, right? And then uh, the winner will play on Sunday. Um, admittedly, I'm rooting for Wisconsin. I'm also kind of rooting for Purdue because I would like Purdue to go to the championship game and have to play another game and not get as much rest as I know my guy Greg Braggs wants Purdue to get. <laughs> um but Purdue is very good, and I don't think like the extra days off or whatever really matters to me. It, to me, it really doesn't. Um, but there's no real proof that really, you know, agrees with that. Um, you know, Illinois won this tournament a few years ago and then lost to Loyola in the second round. So uh, I think the pro for Illinois to win this tournament is getting that three seed, and I think it would be very beneficial for them if they are able to move up and get that. Um, I think they need to at least get to this champ the championship game on, uh, on Sunday, a win over Nebraska will be good for their resume to be able to beat them twice. Um, and considering where they're ranked in Kempom and all those other rankings that you guys talk about online, I think, sure. They could certainly help their resume. Um, so, uh, I will not, I won't be live during the game or after the game tomorrow. I already have plans uh, for St. Patrick's Day weekend uh, tomorrow, and uh, I, I'm i going to watch this game, the game tomorrow, and maybe I'll put up a video or something uh, just kind of reacting or whatever. But I will definitely be live on Sunday if they get to the championship game. Um, so I'll be rooting for a win tomorrow. That way we can do this on Sunday when I'm undoubtedly on very hungover. But um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, Illinois, they they battled. They played a terrible game, <laughs> but they figured it out, man. That's what I'm taking away from this one. All right. So uh, again, hit that like button before we get out of here. If you're on YouTube, subscribe if you're new here. Uh, I appreciate any subscribes um and i'll be back on sunday uh for perhaps a watch along and perhaps well perhaps a watch along and definitely post game two if if illinois wins at least illinois got to win tomorrow so um if they don't win tomorrow then i'll probably just do a show a full a regular show on sunday after selection sunday like after the bracket comes out right so um i guess that's what we can look forward to here yeah 
I'm doing a video. I'm going to do a podcast on Sunday, no matter what. Right. Uh, okay. Again, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate the people who are in the chat tonight. Um, I hope y'all have a good rest of your Friday. Good rest of your St. Patrick's day weekend. Stay safe out there. Do not drink a drive, uh, wear your green. All right. And, uh, I'll see y'all on Sunday. Once again, I appreciate all this is from beyond the pain. I will see y'all as I always say at the very end, I L L.